Over the mountains of the moon, the butterfly began. Down the valley of the shadow, ride, boldly ride. Then he stopped suddenly and said in a strange voice, No, no, listen, don't listen to me, listen. You can find your people if you're brave. They passed down all the roads long ago, and the red bull ran close behind them and covered their footprints. Let nothing you dismay, but don't be half safe. His wings brushed against the unicorn's skin. The red bull, she asked. What is the red bull? The butterfly started to sing. Follow me down, follow me down, follow me down, follow me down. But then he shook his head wildly and recited, His firstling bull has majesty, and his horns are the horns of a wild ox. With them he shall push the peoples, all of them, to the ends of the earth. Listen, listen, listen quickly. I am listening, the unicorn cried. Where are my people, and what is the red bull? But the butterfly swooped close to her ear, laughing. I had nightmares about crawling around on the ground, he sang. The little dogs, Trey, Blanche, Sue, they bark at me. The little snakes, they hiss at me. The beggars are coming to town. Then at last come the clams. For a moment more, he danced in the dusk before her. Then he shivered away into the violet shadows by the roadside, chanting defiantly, It's you or me, moth! Hand to hand to hand to hand! The last the unicorn saw of him was a tiny skittering between the trees, and her eyes might have deceived her, for the night was full of wings now. At least he did recognize me, she thought sadly. That means something. But she answered herself, no, that means nothing at all, except that somebody once made up a song about unicorns or a poem. But the red bull, what could he have meant by that? Another song, I suppose. She walked on slowly, and the night drew close about her. The sky was low and almost pure black, save for one spot of yellowing silver where the moon paced behind thick clouds. The unicorn sang softly to herself, a song she had heard a young girl singing in her forest long ago. Sparrows and cats will live in my shoe sooner than I will live with you. Fish will come walking out of the sea sooner than you will come back to me. She did not understand the words, but the song made her think longingly of her home. It seemed to her that she had heard Autumn begin to shake the beech trees the very moment that she stepped out into the road. At last she lay down in the cold grass and fell asleep. Unicorns are the wariest of all wild things, but they sleep soundly when they sleep. All the same, if she had not been dreaming of home, she would surely have roused at the sound of wheels and jingling coming closer through the night, even though the wheels were muffled in rags and the little bells wrapped in wool. But she was very far away farther than the soft bells could go, and she did not wake. There were nine wagons, each draped in black, each drawn by a lean black horse, and each bearing bared sides like teeth when the wind blew through the black hangings. The lead wagon was driven by a squat old woman, and it bore signs on its shrouded side that read in big letters, Mommy Fortuna's Midnight Carnival, and below, in smaller print, Creatures of Night Brought to Light. When the first wagon drew even with the place where the unicorn lay asleep, the old woman suddenly pulled her black horse to a stop. All the other wagons stopped, too, and waited silently as the old woman swung herself to the ground with an ugly grace. Gliding close to the unicorn, she peered down at her for a long time, and then said, Well, well, bless my old husk of a heart, and here I thought I'd seen the last of them. Her voice left a flavor of honey and gunpowder on the air. If he knew she said, and she showed pebbly teeth as she smiled. But I don't think I'll tell him. She looked back at the black wagons and snapped her fingers twice. The drivers of the second and third wagons got down and came towards her. One was short and dark and stony like herself. The other was a tall, thin man with an air of resolute bewilderment. He wore an old black cloak, and his eyes were green. What do you see? the old woman asked the short man. Rook, what do you see lying there? "'Dead horse,' he answered. "'No, not dead. Give it to the manticore, or the dragon.' His chuckle sounded like matches striking. "'You're a fool,' Mummy Fortuna said to him. Then, to the other, "'What about you, wizard, seer, thermiturge? What do you see with your sorcerer's sight?' She joined with the man Rook in a ratchety roar of laughter, but it ended when she saw that the tall man was still staring at the unicorn. "'Answer me, you juggler,' she snarled. But the tall man did not turn his head. The old woman turned it for him, reaching out a crab-like hand to yank his chin around. His eyes fell before her yellow stare. A horse, he muttered, a white mare. Mummy Fortuna looked at him for a long time. You're a fool too, magician, she snickered at last. 
but a worse fool than a rook and a more dangerous one he lies only out of greed but you lie out of fear or could it be kindness the man said nothing and mommy fortuna laughed by herself all right she said it's a white mare i want her for the carnival the ninth cage is empty i'll need rook i'll need rope rook said he was about to turn away but the old woman stopped him the only rope that could hold her she told him would be the cord with which the old gods bound the fenris wolf that one was made out of fish's breath bird's spittle a woman's beard the meowing of a cat the sinews of the bear and one more thing i remember mountain roots having none of these elements nor dwarves to weave them for us we'll have to do the best we can with iron bars i'll put a sleep on her thus and mummy fortuna's hands knitted the night air while she grumbled a few unpleasant words in her throat there was a smell of lightning about the unicorn when the old woman had finished her spell now cage her she said to the two men she'll sleep till sunrise whatever racket you make unless in your accustomed stupidity you touch her with your hands take the ninth cage to pieces and build it around her but beware the hand that so much as brushes her mane turns instantly to the donkey's hoof it deserves to be again she gazed mockingly at the tall thin man your little tricks would be even harder for you than they already are wizard she said wheezing get to work there's not much dark left when she was well out of earshot sliding back into the shadows of her wagon as though she had just come out to mark the hour the man rook spat and said curiously now i wonder what's worrying that old squid what would it matter if we touched the beast the magician answered him in a voice almost too soft to be heard the touch of a human hand would wake her out of the deepest sleep the devil himself could lay on her and mommy fortuna is no devil she'd like us to think so the dark man sneered donkey's hooves gah but he thrust his hands deep into his pockets why would the spell be broken it's just an old white mare but the magician was walking away towards the last of the black wagons hurry he called over his shoulder it will be day soon it took them the rest of the night to pull down the ninth cage bars and floor and roof and then put it back together around the sleeping unicorn rook was tugging at the door to make sure that it was securely locked when the gray trees in the east boiled over and the unicorn opened her eyes the two men slipped hurriedly away but the tall magician looked back in time to see the unicorn rise to her feet and stare at the iron bars her low head swaying like the head of an old white horse